Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to this edition of Negro and Black Unity, a reply part one. And to you, our dear viewer, it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. The goal is for you to look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications referenced and study them yourself. Remember, I am because we are Ubuntu, a South African saying. And from the poor Negro slave, am I not a man and a brother? This video is a response to a comment and an accusation we received from one of our viewers who alleges that we misinform people and are being divisive and that we don't have references and all that. So we want to present the scenario to you so that you can be the judge. So on your screen you will see the comment that attracted the viewers wrath. We asked the following question to the user called ZZ 86 Do you at least know that the Ghana of today is totally different from the ancient kingdom of Ghana but was simply the Gold Coast Protectorate renamed Ghana? If you know this, you can start your research from there. Thank you. This was all we said. The viewer or user then replied, You are incorrect because many inhabitants of modern Ghana have ancestry with ancient Ghana despite what you think. Few people of what was left of ancient Ghana migrated to what is present day Ghana with a little study and research. You would understand and know this. Now, you notice that he or she, we're not sure what the sex is, did not provide us any reference. All she made was an ambiguous statement that we should research, which is totally different from the scenario or the questions we posed initially. We responded and asked that user, do you know where the ancient kingdom of Ghana was? If you do, please let us know and we take it from there. Thank you. This was a simple question we asked innocently, expecting someone who was battling intellectually to reply with what he or she knows about the ancient kingdom of Ghana, at least from where she drew up the conclusion that some people from there migrated to the modern day Ghana, which was simply the Gold Coast, renamed Ghana, not too long ago. So our question attracted the wrath of this viewer and the next response we got was the Renaissance, it seems you like to argue. Why ask me such a silly question? I already said migrate to modern Ghana. So this would mean they came from elsewhere, Mauritania, Mali, Senegal to be precise. I am not here to argue with you. You spread a lot of misinformation and your channel causes division rather than unity. And that's a problem your small-minded pea brain can't seem to grasp. Much of your research is improper and questionable. Quite frankly, it's immature research which lacks cross-referencing and secondary citations from multiple sources other than from your so-called slave masters. Proof of how you view yourself. I won't go back and forth with you. Understand you are not well versed in this subject at all and come across juvenile and immature studying a concept without the correct comprehension. I commend you on your attempt but it's the fact you are trying to teach when you don't actually know much is what is most divisive about this channel. Simply regurgitating sentences and paragraphs from these books you refer from won't cut it when dealing with real intellectuals. So this was what she said. So we decided to issue a response because of the accusations leveled against us on this her or his last comment. So please remember we have never asked anyone to believe us. 
We always encourage everyone to conduct their own research. We always suggest that people should look for the materials referenced and study them themselves. So we always tell viewers to separate whatever the books are saying from our individual opinions. We also encourage everyone to provide a relevant source of their own side of the narrative. We never block any comments or any viewers. So again, this effectively puts her down as to the lies she has decided to peddle against us. So at least we all can testify to the fact that we have never solicited for people to believe us. We do not even ask people to subscribe to the channel. We don't ask people to share the channel either. So again, you see that she's obviously a liar. She's coming with the aura of the slave master where they want you to believe whatever they are saying without providing you with any proof, but they want you to believe it. She wants us to believe that those in Gold Coast, renamed Ghana, were from ancient kingdom of Ghana. But she doesn't know where the ancient kingdom of Ghana was. So we're going to take this video to debunk all she said in her last comment. So we do not know this viewer directly, but we would imagine she's either Negro or Negroid. If she is Negro, she must have acquired the gullibility and pliability of the non-Negroes. Remember, they normally all believe that living in the same house means unity even if you are murdering yourselves so their understanding of unity is like saying africa is one in theory not that they do anything to benefit each other to show that brotherhood for example if we asked you what use is something like african union you will discover that it is as useless as the name does not suggest so but to the negroid group it is african unity so that's who they are now if you remember they always believe that the slave masters are perfect and next to the creator so that's how they say it so whatever the slave master tells them that's what they believe so if the slave master tells them that this country was made by the almighty they believe it even when all the facts point the other way around at least you can see what is going on in places like Nigeria, Biafra, and Ambazonia, Cameroon. The same thing. They are murdering people to sustain and maintain the slave master's interest. But they turn around to tell you that they are murdering those people because they are brothers. So you see that these people lack anything called common sense. But the weapons, they buy them at exorbitant rates from the slave masters. So you see how they reason. So now... They are usually either Christians or Muslims, but they can't ask questions. Remember, normally when you go to the church or mosque, the imam or the priest will tell you what they want you to believe. And most times, you don't have the choice to ask questions. If you ask questions that are different or not consistent with what they want you to believe, you'll become a rebel or something. Now, the history of that was when the slave master brought the religion. That's how they were presented as well. The slaves were not to ask anything. They were just to believe that they were created to be who they were. So now, to them, the truth usually means hate. So if you tell them any truth that they don't like, they will say you hate them. You have to check this very well. Even when the book, they will see the book saying something like that even asking them if could this be true they will say oh you hate us that's normal with them then they always prefer lies they want to hear to truth they find uncomfortable so those who they have conquered or who has acquired the tendency to be like them behave the same way then you'll see how they are claiming that oh you are being divisive but the country it's okay or the continent is okay with different countries you need a passport to go from one country or the other in africa so to say the same way you need it in europe they have different monies but they believe they are united but the eu that has one currency to them may be divided you see how they reason they don't reason well at all 
and then they do not question the origin of not asking questions in church or mosque they don't question such things so they usually believe the slave master to a point of mothering their siblings over the slave master's interest now remember it's like in a family you have brothers and sisters together the moment you become let's say a muslim or a christian those your brothers use your siblings become your enemies because they are no longer obeying what you have been told from elsewhere that has nothing to do with you but because it's been presented as coming from the most high you believe it and that's it that's something that is very common with the negroid group they don't obey they don't ever ask questions like how could the most high create you create us create everyone and then ask someone to take the other person's property take the other person's land kill him if he doesn't agree and still believe that they are doing the work of the most high see how the deception works but let us just uh, move forward to issue this response to this viewer so that you will be the judge yourself and here are the highlights and lowlights of the comment migrate to modern ghana now the question becomes how did somebody who does not know where the ancient kingdom of ghana was and know how people could have migrated from there to the modern ghana secondly spreading misinformation as if we wrote the books now you see the fact that we are saying look at what these books are saying to them means we are misinforming people they will never hold the slave master accountable or responsible they blame you the slave master gives them guns to murder people when they commit the murder they blame the victim they will, but they will never blame the slave master that gave them the guns she claims we are causing division now you can only cause division where people are united now tell us how can any sensible person say that africa is united and we'll give you an example. You see the mass murders going on in places like Nigeria. Now, to them, those people killing the others are united with them. They are brothers. They are siblings. They are actually united. Just because they are called one place Nigeria. If the slave master wakes up tomorrow and carves out a portion of Nigeria, merge it with a portion of, let's say, Togo, and another portion of, let's say, Bene, put them together, and call it something like um, ball or anything those be to them that group the slave master has created will become united in their view because that's how big or how small their brains are they see the slave master as the creator of heaven and earth that's the problem they have so if you now come and tell them that no these people are not the same they are different they'll tell you it's a lie then you hear something like no god has put us together stop dividing us even when they know that it is the slave master that created those geographical spaces and delineated them the way he wants now according to her or him whatever whichever one he is says it's an immature research no cross references and multiple citations now we're going to show you all she's talking about you know lies are better when you tell them in english we will show you that she doesn't even know what she is talking about he says regurgitating sentences and paragraphs from books won't cut it when dealing with real intellectuals now to her she's a real intellectual and all these are coming simply because we asked a basic question do you know where the ancient kingdom of ghana was if you do tell us that's all now you see where it says cannot provide any reference to what she believes none of these in all these things she never provided one single reference now remember what references do is because we were not around then we can't say what could have happened but the records of those who were there give us an idea then we apply our common sense normally in contemporary society if you are talking of references let's say when you were writing your project in school or your thesis or whatever thing you were writing you will cite references to show where you got some of the things you were putting there because you don't reinvent the wheel you don't conduct the fresh research for everything you are doing you have to now borrow from others who had conducted previous researches and use them to build your own remember the slave master may have
changed this Ghana thing with the plan of 2019 invite to the so-called African Americans? You wouldn't know. Now, many African Americans may not even know that Ghana today had nothing to do with the ancient kingdom of Ghana. But then, our little research here will show them certain things which they too can research themselves. That's all. But she is seeing it as division because of her level of reasoning. So let us quickly debunk some of the issues we raised by looking at some materials published at that time by referencing a new and accurate description of the coast of Guinea divided into the gold, the slave and the ivory coasts containing a geographical, political and natural history of the kingdom and countries with a particular account of the rise, progress and present condition of all the European settlements upon that coast and the just measures for improving the several branches of the Guinea trade and it was written by William Bosman and published in 1705. So there we see a map. In that map, if you look at it, you will see where it says Guinea on top. You will see the ancient kingdom of Benin, which was very big, but is gradually being shrunk today to something very tiny by the slave masters. And then you see the slave coast, you see the gold coast. It was this gold coast that they renamed Ghana. Now, notice that this book was published in 1705. Do you see Ghana anywhere? Isn't it worthy to ask, where did they get Ghana from? At least if they claim that it has anything to do with the ancient kingdom of Ghana. You should be able to see the ancient kingdom of Ghana somewhere here in 1705. But there is nothing there. Now, this viewer wants us to believe that the Gold Coast renamed Ghana means it is related to the ancient kingdom of Ghana simply because she believes the slave masters are like God. They create. Whatever they do has to be right. You have to find answers to justify it, to make it appear right. Now you see that it says Gold Coast. They just renamed it Ghana. It doesn't mean it had anything to do with Ghana. And if you check, Ghana may not even have any meaning in any language in the Gold Coast or in Ashanti or in any of those countries, but they just put into it. If you doubt what we are saying, let the poster tell us the meaning of Ghana. If you know any Ghanaian, ask him or her what does Ghana mean. You might discover they don't even know. They've never asked. They've never wondered. They don't care. Let us also reference a new account of some parts of Guinea and the slave trade containing the history of the late conquest of the kingdom of Wida by the king of Dahomey and it was written by William Snellgrave and it was published in 1734. Note the date of publication 1734. The one we referenced before this was in 1705. This is as at 1734. So again we see the map of the area at that time and you see Gold Coast. You, do you see Ghana anywhere there? The answer is no. You see places like Edra. You see Ashanti on top because it was never originally part of the Gold Coast. The Ashantis are the slave masters foot soldiers just like the Fulanese in Nigeria and the Yorubas are which we shall show you shortly. So you see how it was. There was no Ghana anywhere. So that they renamed it Ghana does not mean it was the original Ghana. We shall look at how they captured or destroyed the area to understand whether she has a point in what she's saying. You can see the Dahomey Kingdom right there, but there is no Ghana anywhere. So you understand, because it's obvious they wanted to cover their tracks about with the slave coast. So they needed to change the Gold Coast, remove the slave coast so that nobody will raise eyebrows remember this um ivory coast is further away so people could easily forget that you see where Melai is which should be mali maybe now that's where she believes the people came from to come to where you have gold coast at least you can see that her views her arguments they have no 
uh, intellectual basis. It's just mere guesswork and conjectures. She does not reference any material, no book. Meanwhile, we are looking at some books we saw. We are not telling her to believe us. Any intellectual, any sensible person would have gone to look for these books, look at them himself or herself, and see if what they are saying is something akin to what he or she believes before coming to call us names over nothing. Just because we asked her a simple question we thought any intellectual as she claims she is could answer. So you understand where we're going. But at least you see where it tells us everything. This is as at 1734. There was nothing like Ghana in this area. Let us also reference Mongo Park and the Niger by Joseph Thompson and it was published in 1890 and there we see the following. Again we see the map of the area. It shows the how the slave masters own every area. You see where it shows French fair, British fair and then it shows you Ashanti, shows you Yoruba, shows you Dahomey, shows you Igbo, shows you Adamawa even, shows you Borono. Does it show you Ghana anywhere? The answer is no. So how did this user know where the ancient kingdom of Ghana was before he, he, she or he knew how they could have migrated from there to the Ghana created by the slave masters to deceive people? So you see what we're talking about. Now the challenge here is she wants us to believe whatever she is saying because that's the order of a slave master. She's probably educated, maybe has up to a master's or something. But they come in and tell you lies and expect you to believe those lies. If you don't believe those lies, then you would have become a bad slave. You would have become a rebel. You would have become something. They will start calling you names. That's exactly how the scenario is. The same thing that happens. They come in, you see if you notice, if you are in the British kingdom, uh, UK and you say you want a referendum like the Scottish did they are only about six million they conduct a referendum whether they rig it or not is a different thing because those are human beings they see themselves as humans but then go to the slave masters territories in sub-saharan Africa say you want Biafra they will say you're a terrorist the slave master will then pass on the guns to them to kill you likewise Ambazonia they don't ever learn from the way the slave master does his own thing too they don't ever learn so they are positions of the slave master and it is through them that the slave masters control the area you see what is happening just because we asked her a very simple question do you know where this kingdom was and we can take it from there that's all we had nothing in mind when we asked the question because we thought we were dealing with someone who could battle intellectually. So you see where the problem is. So you see that even as at 1890s, there was no Ghana anywhere. We started this story from 1705. So now she should be able to provide us with a book or some material published say by 16 something that shows where the kingdom is or before then, so to say. But let us move forward. Let us also reference a history of the Gold Coast and Ashanti from the earliest times to the commencement of the 20th century by W. Wanton Claridge with an introduction by Sir Hugh Clifford and it was published in 1915 and there we see the following. So from just above the highlighted portion and remember they told us how the Ashantis and Fantis were supposedly cousins. So now you see how you debunk some of those their lies because most of them tell lies that they were classically conditioned with. They don't read any books. They don't research it. They just believe whatever the slave master has told them. Remember, that's why they are usually made rulers in those regions so that the slave master can be using them to tell us, control us, or give us anything they want, whatever they want us to believe. This is why you can go to school from kindergarten to PhD. There is nothing about Negroes anywhere that you will learn. Nothing good. They will teach you everything that is about them, but you are going to school in a Negro society, so to say. So this is why even we learn more about the slave master in sub-Saharan Africa than they do 
in places like the US. So you see where it tells us that the Fantis say that they found the forest uninhabited and some of them settled there, founding the village of Kwaman. So please, if you are from Ghana, let us know if that village is still there today. But the majority pushed on till they reached the coast. They are said to have been led by three chiefs, Oshun, Obunoma, Kuma and Odapagan, whatever they are saying. They found the seaboard inhabited by two tribes, the Asibos and the Tisis who united to oppose the newcomers, you see the, the Fantis, they immigrated from somewhere. Now your question might be, maybe that's what she is saying, they came from Ghana. But then she doesn't know where the Ghana Kingdom was. We have not found where it is. All we asked her was, do you know where it was, so that we can take our research from that. And then she started throwing tantrums, which is normal with the Negroid group. So it goes further, I see where it tells, tells us that Comantin is said to have been the principal town of the Asibus and their chief Amamfi, who is said to have been a giant, led them against the Fantis, defeated them and compelled them to pay him tribute. Later, however, they organized a rebellion and drove the Asibus into the bush. But Amamfi, who was suffering from guinea worm in his legs and could not escape, was found in his house and put to death. The Elminas are said to have come to the coast at a later date and to be an offshoot of the Ashantis, which would account for the fact that while the latter have always been the foes of the Fantis, their relations with the Elminas have been uniformly friendly. So you see that it is likely the Elminas that were related to the Ashantis and not the Fantis. So the challenge is we can't know all these things unless we sit back, read these materials, put two and two together and know what could have transpired. But with people like this viewer, you know that it is impossible because all they want to hold on to is whatever the slave master has told them in his class that the place was like. Now, remember the difference between these writers and who we call the slave master. Are some of them were against the slave trade. Many of them were against any subjugation of their fellow man, while many were for it. So now, those that were for it are those that will not want you to see these books. They are those that go to handpick the lackeys and stooges you have in sub-Saharan Africa and use them against their siblings. Now think about it, an average soldier in sub-Saharan Africa carries a weapon that costs more than his annual salary. And what does he do with this, the weapon? To kill people. So if we had a Bill Gates or a Steve Jobs or even a Jesus Christ or a Mohammed, the soldiers would have killed them before they even fulfilled their dreams. This is why the slave master ensures that such people are encouraged and put in positions of authority. You see what we're talking about. So let's just move forward and round up. So but further down, you see where it tells us a little about the languages and the mix-ups. It says, the different languages of the Akras and Apollonians, on the other hand, are to be accounted for by the fact that they are believed to be immigrants from the slave and ivory coast rather than true natives of the Gold Coast. The Akras at least have never succeeded in establishing themselves in the true forest districts and the fact that the country now occupied by the Fantis was at one time inhabited by a very primitive race is proved by the discovery of a number of stone weapons and implements. So you see that those that are there, the Negroes, wherever they are, they are moving away from oppression. This is something we want you to grasp very well. Don't listen to the Negroid group. They are not very smart. They are not very intelligent. This is why if you look at their arguments, if you look at the things they do, you will discover that they lack common sense. Just think about it. These people are moving away from oppression. These are people that will rather buy weapons instead of buying food for their people. So that should tell you how sensible they can be. But at least you see what we're saying here, that this Ghana was never the ancient kingdom of Ghana. 
as to who and who occupies it we have no idea but it shouldn't be something another person should resort to in calling us names over something we didn't say we had no business we didn't tell her what to believe we didn't ask her to believe us so there was no need for her to even come here to comment in the first place because she wasn't invited it was her choice to troll by anyways but let us move forward so here again you see where it tells us that the Fulanese are known to have been migrating in a southerly direction for centuries and the Arabs had even prior to the 11th century founded states in the interior of Africa one of the chief of which was Ghana which is believed to have been near the present site of Sokoto the country of Wangara belonged to this state and though this name is now confined to a country quite distinct from Ashanti. The Mohammedans in Kumasi in 1821 told Mr. Dupis, the British consul, that Ashanti was part of Wangara. According to the Arab historians, the country to the south of Wangara was called Lalam and was inhabited by a race of savages whom the people living round the Niger used to hunt and sell into slavery. So you see again that if the ancient kingdom of Ghana was somewhere around Sokoto and she doesn't know where it was does not provide us any information as to where she thinks it was but wants us to believe that the people in Ghana today were from the ancient kingdom when there were numerous other kingdoms that were desolated and destroyed through razias or slave trade you see that it doesn't make sense but she has resorted to calling us names an onlooker will think that she has a point without knowing this background that she has no point whatsoever she understands how research and academia works a bit so to say now we provided references she said they are not correct now challenge her to provide references that are correct she won't all she will do is to run away and call names because that is the attributes of those negroid groups or a conquered negro they have to fight for their master they have to make you believe whatever the master has put in their heads to help them propagate. That's what you see. So let's move forward. Let us also reference a geographical survey of Africa, its rivers, lakes, mountains, productions, states, populations, etc. by James McQueen, Esquire, and it was published in 1840. And there we see the following. And reading from within the highlighted portion, we see where it says, Secondly, the land of Ghana, which extended from Lake Shard, which you know where Lake Shard is today, somewhere around Sokoto area in what is called Nigeria today, on the east to the borders of the Niger, on the west, and from the Great Desert, which is Sahara Desert, on the north to Lanlem and Mizara, 12 days journey to the south, where the land of Ghana was bounded by infidel countries. Interior Ethiopia is that portion of Africa now denominated by the Arabs of Africa, Sudan, Daklatha. Thirdly, the great division named Malai or Mali, which extended from the land of Ghana on the east to Damlo, containing all the countries situated on the shores of the Atlantic Ocean on the west and from the borders of the desert to the countries reaching to the range of hills generally known as the Kong range on the south. Now this does not leave us with any answers as to where the ancient kingdom of Ghana was and how it is related to the modern day Ghana because what they just did was they just renamed the ancient, uh, they renamed their, their gold coast to Ghana. Now you notice here that it says that the land of Ghana was bounded by infidel countries and it says interior Ethiopia is that portion of Africa now denominated by the Arabs of Africa, Sudan, Daklatha, whatever. Thirdly, the great division named Milai or Mali which extended from the land of Ghana. So it's Mali is totally different and extends from Ghana to somewhere else but they said it was surrounded by so-called of course pagan nations they would call them whatever they like they gave us names and we accept them and kill ourselves over them so you see what we're talking about now we never asked her to believe us we never said ghana belongs to anyone else 
or we were producing were what books were saying which anyone with the most basic of common sense would have just looked for the books study them and challenge us based on what the books are saying rather than saying we are reading from the books if we don't read from the books we will have hours of videos reading the entire page for you so we just have to select places of interest so that when you also go to read them you will look for places of interest rather than reading them like a novel that way you will understand the full context or at least have enough time to cover enough ground so to say but let us just round up with one or two little things about that area let us also reference the nigeria handbook containing statistical and general information respecting the colony and protectorate compiled by ac bonds of the chief secretary's office lagos fourth issue and it was published in 1922 and there we see the following and from within the highlighted portion it says in 1851, owing to the fact that Lagos had become a great center for the slave trade, the British government took action against the king of Lagos, Kosoko, and restored to power Akitoye, from whom the throne had been usurped. In the following year, Akitoye and his chiefs signed a treaty agreeing to abolish the export of slaves and to encourage the work of missionaries and a council was appointed to Lagos for the protection of British interests. Note, for the protection of British interests. So that's their own. They always protect their interests. Now they use their foot soldiers against their so-called siblings, which you can see. But our interest here is what he told us about Lagos. It says in 1866, the colony became a portion of the West African settlement under a governor-in-chief resident at Sierra Leone, and in 1874, it was united with the Gold Coast colony. In 1886, Lagos and its hinterland, which had been gradually acquired, was separated from the Gold Coast and became the colony and protectorate of Lagos. So Lagos was formerly in the Gold Coast. Now, if she claims that the people from ancient kingdom of ghana were in the gold coast so that means some of them should also be in lagos too we can't say truth yes but if you looked at how they destroyed those nations normally the army these armies you see they were the slave hunters they will surround the kingdom whichever one they targeted and of course when they target them they will capture everyone we're going to give you a little example of one that is missing, but it was in the last book we referenced, so you understand what we're saying. So here we see from the book we referenced just before the last one, Landa has preserved two curious documents, namely the hostile manifestos of Sultan Bello and the chief of Funda against each other, which may serve as a correct specimen of the causes of the national wars and the spirit in which together with the object for which these are undertaken in Africa. Note this play very well. The Sultan, that's in bracket, Bello accordingly, assembling all his forces. It is these forces he is assembling that became your Nigerian army and Ghanaian army you see today. So you understand what we're saying. We challenge you to research and post it in the comment section what you find marched with a formidable army towards the devoted Funda, and halting about half a mile from that city sent the following singular and characteristic message of the king here below is Bello's message ruler of Funda, deliver up your country your riches your people and your slaves to the beloved of god mohammed Bello king of all the Muslims, that's all Muslims, without reluctance on your part. For if you do not suffer him quietly and peaceably to take possession of your kingdom in order to propagate the religion of the only true prophet in it, he will shed your blood and the blood of your children and the blood of your household. Not one shall be left alive, while your people he will bind with fetters of iron to be his slaves 
and bondsmen forever, God having so spoken by the mouth of Muhammad. Now we challenge you to tell us where they saw God and he's telling them all this. And if they were the same people, will they be killing themselves this way? Now remember the fullers are not Negroes. Now that king replied, probably that's why that kingdom is nowhere to be found today, which we challenge you to investigate as well. He says, Sultan of the Philatas, he is known today as the Sultan of Sokoto, so you understand the game of the slave master and their foot soldiers. The king of Funda does not know you or your prophet. He laughs your boastings to scorn and despises your impotent threats. Go back to your country and live in peace with your people. For if you persist in the foolish attempt to invade his dominions, you will surely fall by his hands. And instead of him or his subjects being your vassals and bondmen, your slaves shall be his slaves and your people his people. Your chiefs and warriors and mighty men will be slaughtered without mercy and their blood shall be sprinkled on the walls of his town, while even your malams and emirs will be thrust through with spears, and their bodies cast into the woods to be delivered by lions and beds of prey. In reference to the subject of human sacrifices so prevalent in Western Africa, it is merely necessary in order to show their prevalence, their nature and their extent, to adduce the following extract from the journals of Baldwich, Hutchinson, Dupes, and Landa, they speak for themselves. Well, our interest is where it says the response the king of Funda gave to the Sultan of the Fulani, now called Sultan of Sokoto. He says, You should go back to your country and live in peace with your people. If you notice, there is no way the Most High can create people and give one group land. It's just like telling us that this is blasphemous actually telling us now that your father gave his house to one of the children and then that the rest should pack out and without taking care of them nothing at all now we're not talking of children of prodigal or anything we're just talking of from nowhere your father just decides to say all his other children should go and live in the bush while one person takes an entire house no father would do that let alone your heavenly father so you see the thing so that's what they do with their religion it is not a way of life that they brought this is why there is no way the most high will want to send a message to you and send it in a language that you don't understand until that person will come and tell you whatever they like in their own language for you to understand it and you say you are working for the most high so you see that thing we're talking about so that this user doesn't understand a lot of things that are somehow hidden in the books we have refused to read over time so we reference romance of empire the land of the golden trade west africa by john lang and it was published in 1910 and there we see the following if one desired to deal with the story of our troubles with the kingdom of ashanti of the many Ashanti invasions of Gold Coast territory, of our various punitive and other expeditions and missions to Kumasi, a volume would be required for that alone. Now, you see, if Ashanti was originally part of the Gold Coast, at least we have shown you that Lagos was part of it, why would he say Ashanti invading the Gold Coast if he was part of it? So you see that we're talking about. Now, we challenge you to try and find out who the slave master's full soldiers are. It's very simple to find out. Now, stop believing that we are all, all dark-skinned and we are all united. If we were united, there is no way your brother will take weapons bought at expensive costs from the slave masters to be murdering his, their own people. It doesn't make sense. If it makes sense to you, tell us. So that's why you see the armies you have there. They are products of the slave trade. That's why they are there. There is nothing like trade anyway in the slave trade. What they did was they captured and yoked people. They never sold those people. Now, in their books, they will write it as sell. So that you will think that the Most High said, oh, they will be sold. This is why you see those that believe their book will tell you, oh, no, it's prophesied. It is prophesied. That's what they are doing. Nobody prophesied it. They wrote it and they are playing with that script. 
that you don't understand it does not mean it doesn't have a meaning it has a meaning but you don't understand it it's just like if you go to a mathematics class and there is calculus you don't know calculus there is nothing you can do about it you don't know those basic uh, principles of integration or differentiation you don't understand it it doesn't mean that those that are there that have been in the class got the foundation understand how it works do not understand it it just means you if you don't understand it it does not mean others do not those that coded the book know what they wrote they know what they coded in and only the people that are supposed to know know it those who don't know do not know but let us just move forward but at least you see what it's telling us about ashanti here we are showing you the fullers here these people had regular armies now what they are going to turn around is to say we hate them instead of looking for these books studying them and saying oh was this what could have happened is there something we can change so imagine an africa a whole continent have you seen where they are meeting anyway any day and thinking of a way forward the answer is no since you were born how many african countries have you seen that copied anything useful from the slave masters we are talking of useful something not copying rubbish nothing now when you hear tax in the us or europe you would think it's the same thing in sub-saharan africa it's not the same the tax money in sub-saharan africa is used by the slave masters food soldiers to enjoy to live a lavish life while starving their own people if you doubt us tell us what they do with the tax money in places like nigeria in places like cameroon in that whole west africa what do they do with the money they collect from tax nothing what do they do with the money they get from oil and gas nothing they don't have a welfare system they, you can't even talk about it now if you say okay allow us to be on our own so that we can plan these things well they will say oh we have to kill you so we're gonna show you one or two little things before we round up so let us reference the sudan a short compendium of facts and figures about the land of darkness by h carl w Kuhn, phd and it was published circa 1907 now you notice if you are someone that has honor seeing that this place is described as the land of darkness will make you feel somehow but if you notice the negroid group will tell you they are united they will tell you africa is wonderful the way it is it is the best place even when they are murdering people every day that's exactly how the slave trade happened too if you were to study the materials you would discover that while the people were being slaughtered these negroid groups saw it as normal they saw it as in fact whatever thing they were worshipping had given them the pagans which were the negroes to be made slaves so you see where the map on the front page shows sudan so that's the whole area used to be known as sudan and we will see why they called it sudan and then round up with it so here we see where it tells us that in the early ages among the first writers of history we find records about the nations of the sudan especially the eastern sudan the shepherd kings of egypt were ethiopians the monuments of ancient civilized egypt are full of references to the relationship between the egyptians and the sudanese now by sudanese they are the mean black people this is not the place to elaborate the history of this great land of darkness the very name of which sudan from the arabic sawad dark black means land of darkness or the land of the blacks from the roman historians to those of the arabs in the middle ages and then until we come to the early histories of the portuguese spanish dutch french german and english explorations we have one continual line of historical records so but our interest is to see for you to see that at the time in the history they used to be known as sudan as in everyone from that so-called dark continent now if you notice the negroid they don't care if you call them dark call them anything if the slave master calls them that but let somebody 
be the negro a negro i'd call them the same thing they will take all the weapons they have amassed from the slave master and start looking for the person to kill that's because they see whoever is saying that as a slave so now the poster that has claimed that we cause disunity and all that should know that these things did not start today so you see if they change the name from sudan to ethiopian to negro to african american it becomes extremely difficult for anyone to connect the dots which is what they are doing now no matter what you say the negroid group will say you are lying even if when they see it written down unless the slave master tells them that that's who they want to listen to and unfortunately if you tell them the truth they will rather kill you for telling them that truth than believing you but if the slave master comes back to tell them the same truth they will believe and they don't have that shame they don't have that honor now they will still turn around to tell you how they are united you notice that this poster said we are causing division now a place where they are murdering themselves every day as if they are killing cattle one thing they will never allow you there is something like an accurate census because the slave master wouldn't allow them to do that so you don't know your number by any chance so now the, the the same people will be telling you how united they are which is most unfortunate but let us um just see one or two little things about the slave trade from this same book and round up from there so here it tells us that we have reached in sokoto that part of the sudan remember sokoto is part of the sudan so that you don't keep thinking that sudan is south sudan you see today it's larger than that so the reason they change these names is to turn the negro brains around especially the negroid because the negroid will not understand what they are doing but they now use the crude and violence of those negroid against the negroes who will understand it because the negro will be able to decode what they are saying and where he is being cheated but unfortunately they give the weapons to the negroid and make him believe that whatever they say is right and whatever the negro is saying is a lie so this is why you see nigeria belongs to the british heart body and soul but if you wake up and say oh i want biafra i don't want to be in nigeria they already know who to give the weapons to kill people with so you see how it, it plays out now you would think that oh the people there everybody is so stupid that something that you can say if the un doesn't approve it nobody should kill you you would think they will have that level of common sense they don't that's why you see the army is supposed to be a slave hunting terror group so he maintains that status that's why it is always them coming up to say anything that threatens their security now you ask yourself how can somebody who is whose only job is to kill people mothering innocent people and mothering those they are supposedly protecting be telling you about security you you won't reconcile it because that brain is not there and that is the game so it goes further to say the houses and their conquerors the fuller or fubi are the only indigenous african people possessing a literature of their own their language hausa is a great trade language of the central and western sudan being understood more or less from the gulf of guinea in the south to the mediterranean in the north and from wade to the senegal space does not permit us here to enter into the history of sokoto for the last hundred years the country has been well known so sokoto was the capital of the slave trade so which we are going to show you ultimately but at least you see here that the fullers conquered the houses but they are going to try to tell you that you hate them for reading this you are reading it so instead of taking the book to read you will see just read the comments you will see what the fullers will say just read the, only the comments will tell you who they are so here we see the hallmark of the slave trade you see they called it the open saw of africa so you get the gist remember when they tell you trade just ask yourself if the so-called africans did not have a currency they had no medium of exchange other than trade by barter and then somebody comes to tell you that he bought other people from him 
you should be able to ask questions. The only reason that lie still subsists till today is because the Negroid group are not very intelligent. They don't understand when they are called fools. That's one thing you have to bear in mind. So this is why the moment you are telling them anything true, they are the ones to do the killing. The slave master doesn't do anything. The slave master pretends not to know what's going on. They will be the one to kill you. They will be the one to attack you. If you check the comments in these videos, you will notice that the Negroid groups are usually the ones that call it hate. They call it anything just for telling them that, look, this thing wasn't a trade. This is how it happened. You're just trying to open their eyes. You become an enemy of their, themselves. You know, they will say you hate them which is something you have seen with this woman just because we asked where do you think or do you know where the ancient kingdom of ghana was so that's all that's all we did because we didn't believe her that the people in ghana today is the same as the ancient one when we know that they just renamed gold coast to ghana so you see where it tells us that i count 17 villages in flames this is how the slaves were acquired anyway as I write, I hear the loud wails on the left bank of others who are there slain, ignorant of their many friends now in the depths of Lualaba. Oh, let thy kingdom come. No one will ever know the exact loss on this bright, sultry summer morning. It gave me the impression of being in hell. Thus comes the voice from the prince of missionaries in the south. Now you see the slave master a foreigner in that place sees himself as being in hell with the level of carnage this is how they were capturing the slaves but then the the negroid group will tell you that no it's a lie they are lying now when you ask them to just explain to us how a man can sell 400 people and they don't mob him then you become somebody that hates them then you will see something like what this comment uh this poster posted about us just ask them how can a man sell another man at least at that time they didn't have languages so they couldn't communicate with the negroes the negroes couldn't communicate either if you were to read these materials you will understand what we're saying so now you see how they have come with their latest treachery of saying the names of the slave ship the people's name ended in yeah which is a very big lie because you see how they burnt the villages so this burning after burning it where will you gather the names of the people people who are who you don't understand their languages so how will you know what their names are so the reason they are bringing that year narrative is to make people believe that there is some supreme being that has ordained them for slavery whereas if you were the esoteric knowledge type and you have studied the bible very well you will discover that what they simply did was to write what they were planning to do not a prophecy this is what we plan to do this is what we're going to do but we're going to code it like this but that's a subject of another day so now you see how many villages were on fire but they tell you that no it is the same people doing it to themselves but they've been living there for centuries before the slave trade came to meet them, started by a Portuguese named, named Alonso Gonzalez. Nobody talks about the, the, the man that started it, but all they now talk about is how it was Africans that sold other Africans. So you see that the slave master understands this game of lying very well. So in conclusion, we see where it says, where is the Sudan and what is it? Sir Frederick Lugard, through most ingenious statesmanlike action, has succeeded in conquering Sokoto and establishing peace and justice in that former stronghold of slavery. Sokoto is probably the most populous part of the whole of Central Africa. So now, remember, that's the capital of the slave trade. That's why they don't mention it. They don't because they don't want people to know that they are still doing their slave trade. So again, you see, the, the same people that will tell you that God made them one in one Nigeria as justification for slaughtering people who say they want out of Nigeria to be in their own country called Biafra or in Cameroon because it's the same group that is used by the slave master all over the sub-region, the same group, which will challenge you to research or investigate however you want to put it. Now, they will believe that God put made them one in what they call one Nigeria or one Cameroon made by people like Lugard like this. But if they see this now, they will read it. They will tell you that it's not it's not true. 
you are you are um, you hate us for reading this so this thing the, the same lugard that they claim created the one nigeria for which they are murdering people in their millions over nothing when we say nothing we mean nothing over nothing because they lack self-control they lack common sense so now when they read this one they are going to tell you that oh no these books are not authentic or the slave master doesn't like us now when you remind them that but the people you say don't like you are the same people that give you the weapons why don't you reject the weapons they give you to stop killing so that you can stop killing people you say oh you hate us that's who they are so you have seen that same attitude with this poster for whom we had made this video we hope you will understand what we are trying to clarify here and be able to look at the books reference them and study them yourself don't look at people like that because they don't receive knowledge they believe they know all and any other but person talking is talking bs as far as they are concerned even when we have said don't believe us don't even listen to what we're saying just look for the materials study them yourself at least that way you form your own opinion if we have lied or if we have read something that is not there you'll be able to say it. we are still um, misinforming and dividing people now the person talking about division will not see this because they don't understand unity they don't understand division if you notice in europe for example you see how they created their euro you can move with from one country to another in the eu but in africa you see all kinds of rubbish because they don't even understand what they are doing but the slave master knows how to use the fools among them to achieve his own goals so let us round up with one more little thing from this same book so here we see where it says Sir Frederick Lugard proclaimed to Sokoto and Kano the new reign of peace and freedom, the end of slave raiding, bribery, corruption, mutilation, poisoning, and such like Fulani tactics, the new kingdom of righteousness which hung upon the promise from this time and forever white men and soldiers will sit down in the Sokoto country. So remember, they, they, they usually tell you that the british stopped the slave trade because they knew where the route was so you see how they went to make a pact with sokoto which was the capital of the slave trade in that sub-region now the soldiers that were used to capture the slaves was what became the nigerian army if you look for what is called the west african frontier force it is from the same army that the Ghanaian army came from now this user is saying we are misinforming people now we ask the user we challenge her to tell us if africa is united as it is today if yes let her tell us if it's not united how can she now say we are dividing something that is not united because you can't be dividing something that is already divided it doesn't make sense so you see that negroid way of reasoning they don't reason very well and here we come to the end of this response to this poster and we do challenge you to find time to conduct your own research find time to study materials that are outside what they teach you in class the curriculum is structured to make sure you don't deviate from where they want you to be and what they want you to think we thank you very much for listening we thank you for your time and we do hope you will find time to conduct your own research thank you indeed very much for listening Peace.